Hi, my name is Rita Amri Chinda and I welcome you to IP Series Season 3. So what we do here basically is talk about intellectual property, recent cases and development, which could take the form of copyright, trademark, industrial design, trade secret, patent, geographical indication, and plant variety. If this is your first time joining us, please favorite my podcast on Anchor and know that you can also listen to IP series on Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts, um, Brica, Radio Public, Listen Notes, and Overcast. So as this year began, 2021, we've already seen a lot of um, recent cases and development, drama, social media call-outs. So I did a post about I'm trying to look out for with Garnet and Tech Hive advice. So you guys can check that out. So yeah, let's get into our topic for today. So on this episode, we will be talking about three things. So public domain, um, the launch of the AF CFTA agreement after agreement, and then the new NICE classification for trademark registration. So um the year started with three major events so we had the public domain day the launch of the AFTA agreement and the um new nice classification for trademark um protection so um in the united states um it works created from 1925 um are going into public domain this year works like um the great gatsby um if you've watched this netflix movie with chadwick boseman and viola davis um i'm trying to remember the name well yeah um so the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald i used to love fitzgerald as a name and we'll be going into public domain and as we know ip is territorial in nature so what is public domain so basically when you create like an ip work whether it's a patent trademark industrial design and um, copyright they all have their term of duration after which um it's now free for any other person to use and when it comes to copyright we already know that copyright lasts for the duration of the lifetime of um, the author plus 70 years after the author has died so you have like a really long time so let's say you live for like 70 to 80 years your heirs your successors um your estate they get to enjoy and reap the fruit of your labor uh and i like these quotes in the bible ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 which says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens um now this is like one of the biggest ip news because if you've watched the great gatsby and if you've read the book those are two separate um works so you have the book and then you have the film so the film was basically it's like an adaptation from um the book itself now we know copyrights um um, eligible works are, are literary and artistic works and that grants the author of this works an automatic protection um, the moment your work is created in a fixed medium, this could be books like The Great Gatsby, film, broadcast, MP3, pictures, um, videos, you know. Now, copyright, one of the most interesting things is, despite all of this, you know, eligible works, it doesn't protect ideas, um, short phrases, names and words. Although there was this long, you know, phrase from the movie mary popping that almost got um you know registered as a copyright but it wasn't approved so that's basically what happened um and we know that once you create the content we know that once you create a content you get to enjoy exclusive rights um for a term of duration and for the work so 
um the film i was talking about is ma rainy i don't know how many of you have seen it on netflix but the song by gertrude ma rainy um is going into or has gone into public domain as of the first of january 2021 so yeah a lot of other um works that went into um public domain this year but i just chose the um you know popular ones that i felt people would be able to relate to so copyright works from 1925 um that's in the united states will enter the u.s public domain um they're supposed to go into the public domain like since 2001 but the congress as the u.s congress hit a 20-year post button and that extended their copyright term to um 95 years instead of 75 years so another example of um a work that will be going that has gone into public domain is um a film called pretty um ladies now one of the benefits of you know creating an a copyright work is that um or rather the benefits of intellectual property rights is that it encourages innovation and creativity um ip as you know is territorial in nature it can be exploited and commercialized um so yeah i did ask a question in my tweet and i asked like um for a movie so great gatsby as a book was adapted into a movie does that mean that as the book is going into public domain the film will also be going into public domain the answer is no because that's a different set of work a new work that was created um from the book itself and we know that the person who wants to anyone who wants to use um or adapt a copyright work would need to obtain consent permission and authorization which i call the cpa of ip from the owners um this could be in form of a license so you might either have to get a license to create the work or try to buy the work and get the authors to assign their rights to you um i already talked about the term of duration under nigerian um, um copyright law with regards to eligible works um so it's also important that ip owners register their intangible assets for um ip protection that way they get legal validation of their ownership you also enable licensing which is like a way to exploit or commercialize your work um it can be assigned um and also contribute to the survival chances and longevity of the work so you can see that in the united states initially the same protection was for 75 and later it was um extended to 95 in nigeria it's 70 years after the life of um the work so what's the difference between an ip author and a and a creator now an author is someone who merely contributes um ideas information or suggestion but doesn't contribute to the expression of the work itself so let's say while they wanted to adapt the movie someone was making suggestions or trying to make inputs um for the screenplay or the script that person is merely an author is the person that contributes and um, the person that actually um creates the work so the producers the film um the cast everyone that produces the work um end up having exclusive rights to exploit the work either by selling it or making derivative works so i've talked about ip protection what is ip protection ip protection is, is like a legal backing or um, protection for a business or entity or individual which could be um, a creative person or an innovative person um, that gets that has um, exclusive right to use um, their creation and invention design and other intangible assets um, as they wish so so do you think that when a work goes into um public domain it is an end to an era or um the creator ends up losing something really precious my precious my precious okay so uh another issue that i think ip owners tend to experience is like the lack of balance between ip owners and consumers and there's this 
to it i saw by um a handle at E J O Y A L B. So this E J O E Y A L B, and he said that the point of public domain um, is that public domain isn't where things go after we have wrung all of the profits out of it. However, however long it takes, it's just the state of having ending the temporary profit monopoly through government have granted the creator. Public domain should be thought as a return to the default not exception um exception and i i kind of sort of agree with it because you know the reason why one of the main reason why ip owners you know fight infringers is because of that monopoly to um make profit from the creation of their work and that's another reason why we see that um, the end users um or the consumers are always um you know kind of like in a fight with um ip creators um so yeah that concludes the part on public domain so don't don't fret i don't know if um uh, our copyright commission is keeping records so that we too can also start celebrating our own public domain day um you know with regards to content i mean we have a lot of creative persons out there in nigeria nigerians are very creative um so yeah Public domain is not the end of the world. It's it's just like you know going back to status quo. I mean, but yeah, creativity will keep living on. Now, on the second major event for today, which is like the launch and implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, whose main goal is to create one african market for goods and services while facilitating capital movement i mean congrats to africa um like they always say we are one we are one one brother one skin and whatever so the one african market is said to have a market of 1.2 billion i mean that's a lot and a combined GT- GDP of $3.4 trillion. Like, <gasps> wow. So imagine you with that kind of money. But what's the benefit of it? I mean, you get to have access to how many? 54 out of the 55 countries that have signed their agreement. So you have more clients, um, more access access to other territories. You know, it now makes more like it's shortens everything makes things a bit easier but you know that with stuff like this there's going to be like a transition stage for everyone um i read somewhere recently that the ghana um government is already giving out consultation or retaining um foreign firms as consultants i mean it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a one african market the same way we complain about um i I mean i mean i'm speaking from the arbitration aspect now where you see that most arbitration or investment disputes are um you know being heard um you have more foreign arbitrators than the governing law uh you know the likes of exceed and the rest of it i mean if you're trying to promote like one africa i think we need to do it the right way and not try to make tongue um make people talk and make it seem like the whole purpose for this is different. i do hope it's a rumor but nevertheless i hope we're all ready to take advantage of this huge market i mean 1.2 billion so you can imagine the number of creative persons and innovators and startups and entrepreneurs academic that you have access i mean the networking is going to be on a whole different level. So far, just 54 countries out of the 55 countries have signed this agreement. And as at 5th December 2020, 34 countries have signed and ratified the agreement. These countries are Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda, um, Niger, Chad, Eswatini, Guinea. Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Namibia, South Africa, Congo, um, Dibuchi, (laughs) 
you but see i'm so sorry that didn't come out right but um uganda mauritiana senegal togo egypt ethiopia gambia okay i'm just gonna skip this it says sarawi arab democratic rep syria loan zimbabwe burkina faso um and let me just and others angola lesotho tunisia cameroon nigeria central africa rep mauritius gabor equatorial guinea south home and principe <sighs> i mean that's a long list but yeah i managed to go through all of them so yeah clap for me even if i made a little mistake which i shouldn't but yeah i think i'm talking too much now <laughs> now as a true nigerian i was really looking forward to you know when we're actually going to sign and ratify and on 7th of july 2019 we signed and then we ratified on the 11th of november 2020 now this agreement covers five areas trade one trading goods two trading services three investment facilitation four intellectual property right which is like one of the things i'm looking forward to and then you have the competition policy i mean we don't really have like a good competition policy within nigeria and africa but this is like a step in the right um direction so what are the benefits of this afcft after agreement um first it said it's going to be a consolidated market um whereby it boosts inter-african trade i mean if you see made in nigeria made in chad made in niger made in ghana more made in african goods you know that sort of thing there's also going to be like a reduced tariff i know one of the things that people complain when it comes to um import and export is the tariff custom tariff which is like really crazy um but it's a good thing then you have new partnerships and collaboration i'm also looking forward to that and i'm also open to collaboration with other practitioners uh, a larger reach for smes and msmes within africa which is like um smes and msmes um i think they contribute more than 50 percent if not 70 percent to the gdp of um nigeria and i believe every other place and you know in line with the Y post world intellectual property team for this which is on smes and ip i think um i SMEs should and MSMEs should take this agreement really seriously, especially the intellectual property aspect. I mean, I'm actually looking forward to that because I hope to see more IP filings done by Africans. So it's your trademark, is your logo, is your design, is your copyright, is your patent. I mean, the sky is our stepping stone, man okay then we're going to have like a single passport <sighs> well, let's see how that goes then open borders more made in african product and less of made in china sorry i had to whisper that part boy yeah <laughs> Another benefit is that it's going to create opportunity for women entrepreneurs I mean, after all, the future is female, don't you think so? Um, with a focus on women in informal cross-border trade, um, gender and value chain analysis and affirmative actions and preferential public procurement. It's also going to create, um, there's going to be a creation of a dispute resolution mechanism for resolving investment disputes. I don't have my favorite because I'm also an arbitrator, uh, a dispute and negotiation skill um, practitioner. It's also going to promote foreign direct investment for startups in Africa. And then the final and most important one, which is like Agenda 2063 for industrialization in africa so what are the issues that um i think may hinder the success of the implementation of afcfta that's the after agreement one is language barrier um presently the major languages in africa includes english french arabic and portuguese how many of us um in africa actually speak english 
and what's the percentage of those that you know speak the major um, languages what about the minor languages let's use nigeria for instance there are about how many um we have a whole lot of languages out there um so that's going to be an issue um so which begs the question should we adopt one of the popular languages as a lingua franca say english or french or arabic or portuguese should we adopt one of them as a lingua franca so that there won't be any hindrance when it comes to um the trade and um everything that after agreement uh, hopes to achieve then we have the lack of infrastructure i mean that so we're not going to downplay this let's use my hometown for example there's so many deficiencies like the government and they really doing what they're supposed to be doing from the health sector lack of good roads the ports always bringing up different policies some would say they don't really consider um the plights of the citizens but we need to sit up in terms of infrastructure um from the health um sector to the educational sector to the roads um basically everything now the world is being driven by technology how far have we fused the use of tech in everything are we still doing things manually are we ready to even improve you know all of those issues and then you not know, talk of um you know so the roads to the nearest countries if you need to travel from one country to the next are they going to be are you going to experience um difficulty there's also distrust and discrimination amongst ourselves i mean i'm not going to even try to call all this i mean last year or the last two years was rather eventful we've seen a lot of publications on how africans are selling their fellow africans um killing their fellow africans i mean we need to move past all of these things then we there's no unified um data system so how do you really verify that this person is actually a nigerian or a ghanaian or from mauritius um that's going to take a lot of time and what happens if this person commits a crime in one country and is running away from the law and goes to that country and then goes ahead to start a new life? Um, you know, those are the things we need to be considering. Then there's there's going to be some form of resistance from citizens, um, you know, talking, you know. So drawing it back from when I talked about distrust and discrimination, and I've seen publications where they say um, they're giving some countries difficulties, some um, you know nationals of a country difficulty because they're from this country so i'm going to use nigeria so we've seen publications where say oh in ghana nigerians are treated some sort of way um in south africa the same thing this country um the citizens are complaining oh they are here to take our jobs away from us you know all those sort of comments and it just it's mind blowing, anyways. And they have issues on insecurity and insurgency. I mean, Nigeria has been suffering that for the last five years. Boko Haram has been an issue. Um, you can't even travel to the north. The roads are not safe. Kidnappers everywhere. That's not talk of when you want to do um a cross border um transportation. What are the security measures being put in place by the government? to ensure that everyone is safe then you have um which is like my least favorite the international interference from developed countries or uh, we still having some sort of colonial ties with debt all over us so you know when the pandemic started there were a lot of bad comments people were expecting like africa to be like a dead zone like by now half of africa should have been wiped off but we kind of disappointed them because we were i wouldn't say too proactive well was it would i say reactive or proactive now i'm not really sure because in nigeria what we saw was that the government sort of delayed a bit and there were comments that government was delaying because most of their families were out of the country and that sort of you know made the um the virus spread the more 
um you know we see a lot of african countries also borrowing lots of money from um china and other jurisdiction i mean you're always seeking help but then we're not seeing what you're using the fund to do that's questionable um so i know one of these portuguese jurisdiction i think i did see one time where they said they were still and also the french they were still paying some sort of money to their colonial masters and oof but yeah one of the so in conclusion the launch of the af cft that's the after agreements is a step in the right direction um you know towards achieving one african market with the agenda 2063 as the prize the blueprint and master plan for transforming and um africa so kudos to everyone who made this happen hopefully we are going to make the best of it um so yeah so another and so last but not the least major event for the first of january is the new version of the 11th edition of the international classification of goods and services for registration of trademark as which is called the nice classification which is ncl 11 hyphen 2021 which came into force on the 1st of january so um when i was talking about the after agreement i did mention um smes and msmes and i know one of the ways they can actually you know exploit um their brands or grow the value of their intangible aspect is by um registering and protecting their intellectual properties and this could be in form of their logos trademark their creation invention so yeah um if you're an sme these are like you need to have and look at the brighter side of having a multi-layered um ip um, protection So we know that when it has to do with trademark registration, it must be distinctive in nature. Um, registration is supposed to take three months, which is what the law says, inclusive of um, the opposition of a mark before it is finally registered. However, in practice, it's a different ball game that could be like, you know, six take like six to nine months, and but. You know, it's best that you consult your intellectual property lawyer uh, in the course of registering your your trademark, which could be in form of words, name, phrases, logo, sound, smell, anything that you can use to differentiate your own brand from um, another brand. So what is this nice classification about? Now, this was established by the nice agreement 1957 um, for classification of goods and services to be used for the purpose of registering a trademark and service mark Um, it is a requirement in the course of applying and registering a trademark that you you indicate at the um, trademark office the number of class or classes of goods and services that the mark which you, you want to use belongs to um now the nice classification is updated every five years and the latest one which is the one that came into force this year first of um january however there was also another one that came into force last year called the ncl 20 um 20 um the nice classification is divided into 45 classes so from class 1 to 34 um, includes um, goods. Um, that means the mark you want to register is considered to be a goods. Why class 35 to 45 um, focuses on services, which those who render services. And applicants can choose the one related to the mark that they wish um, to register. This nice agreement is 
open to state parties who are signatory to the Paris Convention, which is for the protection of industrial properties such as patent, um, trademark, which is like the main focus of today, um, in industrial design, utility model, service mark, trade names, uh, and repression of unfair competition. So what are the three main um, categories of the Paris Convention? Now you have the national treatment which states that um, contracting parties, that is parties that signed the agreement, must grant protection to other contracting states who are members of this agreement. So um, then you have um, the right of priority. In this case, what this means is that the first person to apply in the case of um, a patent application or trademark or industrial design may, within a certain period of time, apply for the protection in any other contracting stage, which will be regarded as being filed on the same day as the first application. So if you wish to do like an international um, trademark registration, say in Ghana, um, it will be regarded that your mark will register the same day you registered in Nigeria. And like we, I earlier stated, IP is territorial in nature. And these applicants will have a right of priority over other applicants who filed um, during that same period. Um, for marks, that's for trademark, no application filed for the of a mark by a national or of a contracting state may be refused or invalidated on the basis that the registration filing or renewal hasn't been effected in the country of origin. It may also be refused if it infringes on another person's mark, um, it's not distinctive enough, it's liable of deceiving the public and is contrary to public. And finally, the last category is that um, the common rules which must be adhered to by all um, contracting cities are trademark is um, defined as the word, sign, slogan, title, symbol, sound, smell used in relation to business or using identifying the commercial origin of a product or services. Now for service, it's called the service mark. Um, and in Nigeria, this is governed as the trademark is governed by the Trademark Act. A registered trademark gives the owner um, exclusive right to use the mark as registered. Whenever you see um, the R symbol beside the name of a brand, it means it's registered. So, for instance, if you see um, IP series and then you see R beside it, that means IP series is registered. If you see TM, that means it's an unregistered mark. And if you see SM, it means it's an unregistered service mark. So what are the examples of a mark? So you have the word mark, the figurative mark, um, 3D mark, color per, color per se mark, and um, sound mark. Um, basic of a trademark, types of trademarks, you have trademarks, which is distinguished goods, service marks for distinguishing services, collective marks for distinguishing goods and services by members of an association for instance the nigerian bar association um, certification mark certifying that a product is of standards they have well-known marks such as google nike facebook they benefit from having you know a stronger protection then you have trade name against um a trademark service marks are usually registered to produce to project protect service providers for instance, Jumia, which is like an e-service company, can be the service mark. Why Jumia's name? Jumia, its name, its logo design can be um, the trademark of Jumia. For sound mark, this could include adverts, jingles, anything that identifies a brand. For instance, a NTA Newsline jingle, um, um, the MGM Lions Row used in movies is. It's trademark and this and in 2020 pitbull trademark is famous um yeah Eee-hoo! probably sure you've heard if you're a pitbull fan um then collective marks like i said associated with um, an enterprise to dis- distinguish the services of the members and this could be like the ad- um the geographical origin material mode of manufacture it also ensures that members comply with their standard and use um, it to promote 
their product, why collective marks, for instance, are used to identify goods or services. So the function of a collective mark is that it informs the public about certain features of the product. It can be used by anyone who meets the fine standard. So in 2018, the Barcelona collective mark, which was applied for by the City Council of Barcelona in Class 45, was rejected because it had no distinctive character. Um, then for certification mark, is used to identify goods or services, which um, Section 43 of the Nigerian Trademark Act defines it as a mark adapted in relation to any goods to distinguish in the course of trade goods certified by any person in respect of origin, material, method of manufacture, quality, accuracy, or other characteristics from goods not so certified shall be registrable as a certification trademark in Part A or the registrar or the register in respect of those goods in the name as proprietor thereof of that person, provided that the mark shall not be so registrable in the name for of a person who carries on a trade in goods of the kind certified. Now, subsection 9 states that it shall not be assigned or transmitted except with the consent of the minister. Example is CM hyphen ICE. ISO 900, you also have um, Coffee Kenya uh, and several others, Woolmark, um, Chartered Financial Analysis. Then for well-known or famous marks, these are marks that identify even without much effort. For instance, you can identify Google if you see Google, um, McDonald's, Amazon, Johnson, Wall Street, you know, those sort of things. Now, when we talk about trade dress, we mean the overall design, the appearance of a product, packaging. Um, however, in order to receive protection, it must be non-functional and purely aesthetic. For instance, um, product packaging, um, pro the shape of a product, the look and feel of a product, the building design, um, uniforms and costumes um the elements and uh, the clothing design elements um your shoes those are examples of um a trade dress why a trade name is a legal or brand name a company has for instance nike pandora samsung um etc etc so yeah that's about it for um trademark and the nice um classification so in wrapping up creatives and innovators need to exploit and commercialize their intellectual properties also um, professionals entrepreneurs should also be strategic in taking advantage of the af cft that's the after agreement um one african market and with that i've come to the next end of our ip series for this episode and so on to the next ip series keep being a creative person keep creating keep innovating don't forget ip is everywhere and a the af cfta agreement is the future um so yeah don't forget you can send in your questions and comment if you want or would love to collaborate with me send me an email to ipseriesinfo at gmail.com until the next episode bye bye guys mm -hmm.